Hello. Uh, this feels a bit wrong, really, but uh, needs must. So let's drill this out. And there. Okay, let's fix the voltmeters to the dad's office sign. Okay, that's the first one. Yeah, I think that's going to work fine. So temporarily I've set up these two self-powered voltmeters um, which run down to half a volt which is quite handy because I've set them up on this uh, supercapacitor bank and I'm putting 500 milliamps, 500 milliamps into this supercapacitor bank but it's only gone up to 2.4 volts and now it's kind of sitting there and won't go any higher and you can see that the 2.4 volts is split equally between the two capacitors, 1.2 volts each. Now, if you remember from my post bag video, this super, oh, these are quite warm actually. Um, this super capacitor uh, module turned up with a chip missing. There it is. It's missing from that position there. Um, the chip is in place on the other side, but I've actually lifted a leg on it so that it is effectively out of circuit um, because I wanted to just show both sides what the circuit does if that chip isn't present. Now I set up an AliExpress dispute resolution thing and the seller gave me a partial discount for that missing chip so uh, they're happy, I'm happy and we now move on. So what is actually happening in this circuit um, with that chip missing that gives rise to this 2.4 volts uh, upper limit, 1.2 volts per capacitor. Now remember these are 2.7 volt capacitors so they should go um, a lot higher and when they get up to their maximum voltage this LED is supposed to turn on which means that the uh, protection circuit is on and the capacitor is being discharged through those 4R7 resistors and this MOSFET here. Well the fact is without that uh, voltage oops, voltage detector chip there and with this one having its leg lifted in this corner here um, these MOSFETs are ever so slightly turned on and uh, that means that some current is flowing through these four R7 resistors and we've reached an equilibrium where the 500 millivolts of incoming current is being uh, sorry 500 milliamps of incoming current is being offset by current flowing through these resistors now at the full 2.7 or let's call it 2.5 volts these resistors which are about 2.5 ohms would uh, dissipate one amp or allow one amp to flow so it could offset an amp of incoming current here it's offsetting 500 milliamps of incoming current at 2.4 volts across the whole capacitor, 1.2 volts per individual capacitor. So let's draw the schematic. Um, we can see that the two resistors are connected to the positive capacitor terminal. So I'll draw these two resistors here. Uh, they're in parallel like so. Uh, then we have this MOSFET here. Now it's marked as, I think it's 2N4. Now if you do a search on Google for 2N4 SOT23, it actually, this is one of the results. It's this MOSFET, uh, N channel 30 volts, 2.1 amps. Uh, nowhere on this data sheet does it actually say the marking is 2N4. Not that I can see anyway, uh, there's this specific device code, but it doesn't say 2N4, but I do think this is a pretty good candidate for the MOSFET that's on there. And what makes me think that is in the characteristics, the on characteristics, we have here that uh, VGS, the, the gate threshold voltage, uh, voltage gate source threshold in brackets, there's a minimum of 1 volt, typically 1.7 volts, and a maximum of 2.4 volts. Uh, trying to remember how to draw... Oh, why is it not focused on that? 
uh, a N channel MOSFET. Actually, I could look at that data sheet, can't I? Yes, so in here we have the arrow and then we've got the body diode running up there. Okay, that'll do. So that's the N channel MOSFET. Um, the uh, source of that, this is the source, is tied to zero volts. Or the negative of the capacitor. So I should draw the capacitor in really. Um, these are the two big resistors. So it's 4R7, 4R7, um, about two and a half ohms with those in parallel. And then the gate of this MOSFET, uh, which we draw as an insulated gate, like so, um, is pulled high by a resistor. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, so the gate is this connection here. It's pulled high through that resistor, which I'll have to get a magnifying glass to have a look at, um, held down by the output pin on this voltage detector chip. But that's the pin that I've lifted. So that's not doing anything at the moment. So actually all that's happening is the gate of the MOSFET is pulled right up to positive through that resistor. And it's a 5101, so it's a 5K1, I think, isn't it? 5100, yeah, 5K1, up to positive of the capacitor, and that goes to the gate of the MOSFET. So you can see here that when the capacitor voltage reaches a point where the voltage on this gate, and that resistor is fairly irrelevant actually, you could probably tie that directly up to uh, positive, positive, negative. Um, when it reaches the gate threshold of this MOSFET, this MOSFET turns on and a current will flow down through these resistors, down through the MOSFET to the negative of the capacitor. And the voltage at which this happens will be when the current flowing into this capacitor uh, reaches an equilibrium with the current flowing down here and they're balanced out, the voltage can thus go no higher and it is at 2.4 volts, um, 1.2 volts per capacitor. If you can see that, I took my light away, I'll bring it back. Yes, this voltage here, 1.21 volts per capacitor. Now there's also uh, a resistor coming down from positive, I'll extend that out, a resistor here. Now that has an LED on it. Let's put some arrows on there. And that goes to this point here, which is the drain of the MOSFET. So when this MOSFET turns on, it also allows a current path down here through this red LED and down to ground. Now the problem is at the moment with only uh, 1.2 volts across this capacitor, there simply isn't enough voltage to illuminate that LED. So it's not illuminated. So now what happens if I increase the current here? Uh, we've got 500 milliamps, so let's take that up to one amp. Eight, nine, one amp. <laughs> That's why these buttons wear out. Okay, so we've got one amp, uh, four volts. Let's turn that on. The voltage on these capacitors will now rise further and I'll wait until they get to their equilibrium point uh, because of course we've got more current coming into the capacitors. So what will happen now is the voltage on the capacitors will rise up a little bit higher, turn this MOSFET on a little bit more fully, more current will flow down here through these four R7s and we'll reach another equilibrium point but at a higher capacitor voltage. I've just uh, noticed that the LED resistor is 1001 so that's 1 K ohms. So not a huge amount of current going through that uh, LED, but they're very efficient these days. So typically you'll find quite a high value resistor on LEDs. So now we've got 3.4 volts across the pair of capacitors. That's, oh, I slightly moved the camera. 1.7 volts uh, on each of them. Oh, and it is visible here. You can see that with that additional uh, voltage across the big supercapacitor, which I've drawn there, there is now enough voltage uh, across this LED 
to allow it to conduct and the current's flowing. So you can see that this MOSFET is on uh, partially or fully, not quite fully probably. And you can see the red LEDs here are lit. And I can tell you that these resistors are now really quite hot because they're dissipating a fair amount of current. You can work it out if you want. It's uh, 1.75 volts across whatever two, four R7s are in parallel. That's the amount of, and then multiply um, volts by amps to get watts, and that's how much power there is being dissipated in those uh, resistors, minus the on resistance of this FET, of course. And I can see from the data sheet that the on resistance of this FET is going to be something like 100 milliohms, so it's quite small in comparison to these resistors.